the stand, Patricia, this is one of my sisters. And, and just come, to, come, come close to me real second. Go quickly, come on close to me so you can get a picture of me and her together. So you can say, uh, Bishop is here with his sister right over here in Ghana. So let, get the phone out. Let's take a quick picture and all of that. Good. Okay, I'm going to give you five seconds so we can say you preached the message in Ghana. So I'm going to give you 10, no, I'll give you 10 seconds because I only have a few minutes here. So I'll give you 10 seconds. Greetings. And I would like to say that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Excellent. Love you, Sister Pat. Great person. Serving with me today, Minister Troy Carter. Come run up here, Minister Troy. He's the guy I trained in the ministry, and he flew all the way over here from, uh, from San Antonio. So in San Antonio, he left to be on, got made it here Thursday to be here until this evening, just a few days. Thank you all. Uh, my word of encouragement to you is that your gift will make room for you and bring you in the presence of great men. So God has given each of you a specific gift that only you were assigned to do. So find out what that is. Rush towards it and serve God with it. This man has served with me over, uh, Troy, I think over 20 years or something like that. I, I'm 25 years he served, my God. Isn't that a powerful thing? Good, I'm coming over there, but all the way from right here in North Texas area, and I, they're friends of here over here, stand up right here, this group on second row right here, stand up. These are friends, Pastor Nana, man of God, come run over here to me real quickly, run real quickly here. I give a shout out to Harvest Christian Academy, Ghana, celebrating 10 years. A la lady, come on, Lady Betty, come on, come on Betty, quickly here. And we all moving fast because it's counting down on my time. God bless you. Keep up. Come on, Betty. Excellent. We're so happy for them. And then I'm coming to you right over here because I am shocked today. But I'm thanking God. Yes. Uh, your friends that are standing right there too. Yes. That's Dr. Lawan Jones. She was Betty's roommate when we started school at Prairie View, NM University. And then Mrs. Lakita Simmons, a pastor's wife, and the granddaughter, Kinsley uh, Timmons. It's good to have all of you from North Texas. Excellent. So we give a shout out to Pastor Nana and Betty, who are phenomenal leaders. We celebrate the 10 years of excellence and God's faithfulness toward you. Somebody make some noise for them. Bishop Crocker Baden stopped by for the celebration too, to celebrate with them. He was there for the 10 year celebration. But also I looked over there and I saw two other ministers that served with me at the harvest run on up here. This is Pastor Terry uh, and also Elder Roz, come on. They've been with, when I speak of the harvest, I can't help but speak of them. Hallelujah! Somebody say hallelujah. Come on, say it with an attitude. Hallelujah. Now, that was a song I wanted to sing this morning, and I am not necessarily a soloist, but I got one here today. I say, Lord, I, she was one of the original ones that was singing with me in the altar singers. We would have, I would preach, and I would have people sing, and I would dance and prophesy. She was one of my original singers with me probably 25 years ago. This is an powerful prayer warrior preacher she comes to Ghana to go out into the village areas and preach in the villages oh I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall be in my mouth oh magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together clap your hands oh you people shout unto God with a voice of triumph Open your mouth and say yes, Lord. Open your mouth and say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
Now, she was one of the singers. This is one of the preachers over here. So I, I don't expect her to do singing because that ain't her lame. But I was just with her and her mom who serves in the ministry. But this woman here served with me probably 25 years too. Her name is Elder Rosalind Allen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap today. He is worthy to be praised. I'm so honored to be here today. And I will, she took my scripture, I will bless the Lord at all times in his praise shall continually be in my mouth. It's good to see you, Bishop. God bless you, Bo. Good, did I get our picture? Ah! Oh, come on, get the picture. Oh, no, I miss it. God bless you. Thank you very much. I'm so glad to have people with me today. The Bible says it this way. By this shall men know you're my disciples. By your what? Love one for another. I believe if a person is going to preach and teach to you, they must have a history of loving people. In this day and time, it's got to be more about us than it is about me. So we have to unite and connect with people. So if you don't mind for a second, look at somebody and say, I'm glad you're here. And because you're here, sitting on my row, the Holy Spirit will rest right here. Somebody let me know where the Holy Spirit is resting. Come on, let, let me see the signs. Let, let me see the signs that the Holy Spirit is resting where you are. Come on, let me see a sign. Uh, hallelujah. Well, the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. Anybody know how to get God in your house? I need about 10 praises that don't mind praising. Ah! That don't mind shouting. I need about 10 of you. Somebody say yes! Dance and music right there. Give me a little dance and music. Go. Ah! I want about 15 dancers. Come to the front real quick. 15 dancers. Come quickly. Come on. Break it down. Break it down right here. Break it down. 15 that don't mind dancing. 15 or 20 of you that don't mind dancing. We get ready to dance with our feet. And I need a few more men. Come to the come to the altar. Some women come to the altar. Come, come on, come on, come on, come on. Are y'all ready? Let the music play. say yes somebody say yes again yes. Uh -huh. shall we pray now father we thank you for allowing us to gather in your name we thank you for giving us all things that pertain to life and godliness we thank you for this great church as we catch the anointing in this catch the anointing Lord God center we thank you Lord God for today's message yokes will be destroyed and burdens removed 
there is nothing too hard for you for your faithfulness is so great and we thank you again in Jesus name we pray amen I want to deal with five reasons why we thank God five reasons why we thank God when I say five reasons, you probably can come with the 5,000 reasons to thank God. But I want to focus our thanks on these particular reasons this morning. So that when we shout and dance the next time, it's a thanks unto our God. Reason number one why we thank God is that we thank God for who we are. The Bible says in Genesis chapter number one, verse number 27, so God created man in his own image and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. God created us in his own image. God created us to be a spirit. We know that God is spirit according to John 4 and 24 for God is spirit and, and, and he teaches such and, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So we recognize God is spirit. He made us in his image. He's made us to be a spirit. A spirit it has eternity in it. Spirit does not exist just for a moment, but it continues beyond the moment. The Bible also says in Genesis chapter number 2, verse number 7, And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So we realize then that we came from the earth, the form, the body came from the earth. But we realize that our spirit came from God. Ecclesiastes 12 and 7 bears witness to that also. It says, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return to God who gave it. So it validates what we just read in Genesis. It says, Yes, uh, the body or the, uh, uh, the earth shall receive the body that came from it, the dust from which it became. It came from the dust and it shall go back to the earth. But the spirit shall return to God who gave it. So what about us that we find in the scripture? We find that we are eternal beings having an experience in time. Do not liken yourself only to this moment. You are an eternal being having an experience in time. You're living in time right now. But one day you will live beyond time. In time, you will not be able to define all of you. You will not see all of who you are and how you are in time because you are a spirit being. You were created to live even beyond this time and this, this dispensation. So do not evaluate yourself based on where you find yourself in time today. Do not define yourself based on where you've come from and how you exist. Because you are an eternal being having experience in time. This is temporary. And one day you will live beyond the time you're in. So you can thank God for who you are. So the person who may be rich can thank God for who you are. Because you still are a spirit being. The person who, who has much or the person who has little still has the same reason to thank God for who they are. They still are eternal beings, have an experience in time. So therefore, if they're sick days or days of challenge, that does not matter as much. Because these are not the end of days. These are not the summation of how you will exist. You will live but down this moment. Somebody say, I thank God that I have eternity. I may be having an experience today in time. But one day, I'll move out of time. Isn't that a good thing? Second reason why we thank God. We thank God for how we are. Somebody say, I thank God for how I am. The Bible says in Psalm 139, verse number 12 through 14, even the darkness will not uh, be dark to you. The night will shine like the day. The darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and what? Your works are what? Wonderful. I know them full well. According to the NIV version of Psalm 139 verse number 12 and 14. 
It lets me know I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. And then in Jeremiah 1 and 19, they will fight against you, but will not overcome you. For I am the Lord, so I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. They will fight against you, but will not overcome you. For I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. We thank God because of how we are. And who are we? We are winners. Somebody yell, we are winners. Somebody yell again, we are winners. That's who we are. We win. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. God has so crafted and designed us that we will always win. Now, what we must check, though, we must check the field that we're on because God created us to win. But if you're not winning in life, maybe you're on the wrong field of play. If you are not winning, check that field. Is this the right place I'm supposed to be playing? A footballer may not win on a golf course. Neither will a swimmer necessarily win on a tennis court. A swimmer is going to do better in the water. A footballer is going to do better on a football field. You must check the field you're in or on to determine your success. Because there is a place for you to win. Somebody said, there's a place for me to win. And if I am not winning, I must check the place I'm in. God always will speak to you if you're on the correct field. Man of God, stand here with me real quickly. God always speaks to you. And causes you to win. I want you to face that way. And just stay right there and face that way. Man of God, you come right here. And I want you to stand right here. And face toward him. And there's something that's going to happen. God always causes you to win. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, God gives you an advantage. The Bible says we're not ignorant of Satan's devices lest he gets an advantage. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we have insight to what the enemy is trying to do. And so as you face this way, and I want this to be a representation of you facing God. And you just face me quickly. Just face me. Keep your eyes on me. And as a matter of fact, wherever I go, I want you to go. So whatever, wherever I go, I want you to go. Wherever I go, I want you to go. Wherever I go, I want you to go. Keep on following me wherever I go. I want you to go. Don't look anywhere to the right or the left. Don't even look behind, but keep on back and forth. Wherever I go, I want you to go. Keep on going wherever I go. Now, as you stay right there, put it on pause just for a moment. And here is the adversary coming against you. I want you to come against him. I want you to come against him. Now, you see where he is, right? You come against him. Now, I want you to get ready to come against him. And all you can do is move forward, okay? All right, you start moving forward. That's right, you start moving. You start moving. You keep following me, keep following me. Keep following me, keep following me. And though the adversary may try to come, adversary, you're coming behind him now. You're coming after him. But saints, it is not your job to keep your eyes on the devil. It is not your job to figure out where the enemy's coming. It is your job to keep your eyes on the Lord. When you keep your eyes on the Lord, you will win. What some of us do, we stop and we start fighting the devil. So instead of looking at God, uh, Prophet, I, I don't know if they do it here in, in Ghana, but sometimes at our prayer meetings, we do more talking to the devil than we talk to God. Devil, I'm so sick of you. I'm so tired of you. Devil, you've been fighting everybody in my family. You've been fighting my mama. You've been fighting my daddy. You've been fighting my cousin. Why talk to the devil? If you talk to God, God can make the enemy behave. He can make your enemies your footstool. Keep your eyes on the Lord and you shall win. Somebody say, I shall win. Now the enemy's coming in like a flood, but keep on, sir. All you're doing is following after me. You're following, you're following. And even as a matter of fact, when you get real close, stay right there, just stay right there. When you get real close, I want you to come to go, to go after his head, okay? Try to cut his head off, all right? You're going to try to cut his head off. What you're going to do that? You're going to try to cut his head off? But sir, 
you better move a little quicker than that. Some of y'all moving too slow. Somebody said, you move too slow. When the Lord says, jump to your knees, you better get to your knees. Come against his head again. Come on. Sir, that's right. Now he's been there. Let me show you how to get down real quick. Come on, son. Come on, let me show you how to get down real quick. You coming against his head? Come on. There you go. That's how you do it. You got to quickly move. Somebody said, quickly move. Because God ordains for you to win. Somebody said, you shall win. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep your focus on God. Keep your thoughts on God. You're going to win. If the business you're in right now is not bringing you what you desire, it's time for you to add to and shift your business. As a matter of fact, your days of having just enough are over. You got to live in the overflow. Somebody rear back and say, I've got to live in the overflow. For the greater one lives on the inside of me. He's giving me the victory over the world. Do you believe this? Then somebody shout like you have it. I have it! One of the things that I even told my natural sister, my natural sister who's first time coming here, I said, sister, from now on, I want you to travel every year. And then I said to her, God has given you a business to move forward. She is an excellent cook. Somebody said that. Yes, she is. So I said, sister, when you go back home, I want you to prepare Sunday meals for people in the community. And I want you to sell your meals so that you can have money to come back to Ghana and everywhere else you want to go. I told her this, don't just limit your income based on the job you have. God has given you something to win with. And you will win when you use what you have. So tell somebody, use what you have. If you bake, you bake the more. If you cook, you cook the more. Even if you shine shoes, shine shoes. If you sell jewelry, sell your jewelry. But you will win. Somebody said, we win. So how are we? We are winners. Again, we are winners. We will win in every situation of our lives. We thank God for how we are. We are winners. Number one, we thank God for who we are. Number two, we thank God for how we are. Number, number three, we thank God for remembering us. He remembers us. The Bible says in Isaiah 49, verse 14 through 16. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast? Has her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. God will never forget us. Somebody throw those hands and say, Lord, thank you for remembering me. One of the greatest things that uh, we that grew up in large families treasure is that when our parents would do something particularly for us, by being in a family of 11, I counted it very significant when my father would do something special for my birthday or my mother would do something special for my birthday. I said, mother and father, though you have 11, you did something special just for me. One of the things that my father did for me was to acknowledge the gift that was in my life and to validate who I am. God remembers each one of us. There are billions of people on the earth, but not one of us is forgotten and overlooked even if he knows the very hairs of hair hair on our head every one of them and you know this with me that's not a hard thing to count though <laughs> but he knows the one that's sticking up though the others are gone he remembers me I am so grateful that God remembers can you throw your hands up and say Lord thank you for remembering me 
knowing that he remembers you, validates you, affirms you, causes you to know that the great one has knowledge of you and sees that whatever is in your hand has potential, has life, and has significance. You are remembered. Thank you for remembering me, God. Not only does the Lord remember us, but he, the Lord prepares a table for us. Somebody said, we thank God for preparing a table for us. The Bible says in Psalm 23 and 5, Thou what? Prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Coming to the table is more than the nourishment of the body. Though it is a nourishment of the body. Coming to the table is also fellowship. God preparing a table before you and giving you a table is giving you the nourishment to, for the day. But it also, it causes you to have fellowship. At the table we eat and at the table we console our souls. At the table we comfort one another. At the table we gather like many families. How many come to the table and eat with your family? How many eat the table with your family? It, it is a celebration of your oneness. A celebration of your connection. The Bible also says in 2 Samuel chapter 9 verse 7. It says, so David said to him, do not fear for I will surely show you kindness for Jonathan your father's sake and restore to you all the land of Saul your grandfather and you shall eat bread at my table continually that bread that 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 was offered here it was I realized that there was some good that was given to somebody to me by somebody else and so I want to extend that to someone of their seed so what David offers he says I offer fellowship I offer nourishment and so he is saying, I'm offering provision to someone else. God has given us provision. Somebody say provision. And I am very thankful for it. But not only does God give us provision, not only does God give us the dollars that we need and give us the resources, but God gives us something that we cannot tangibly see. He gives us sweet communion. He gives us fellowship. The older I get, the more I realize that there are things that are more valuable than what I can uh, measure in dollars. Anybody know that? Peace is more valuable. Good health is more valuable. Which one of you would, 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 would trade your mother for one million U.S. dollars? Which one of you would do that? Which one of you would trade your son or daughter for a million U.S. dollars? Which one of you? Which one of you would say, I'll give you a million U.S. dollars if you would just die in one day? Which one of you would take that? You wouldn't take that. Why? Because there's something more valuable than the dollars. There's something more valuable. That's the life that we have. That's the, uh, the intangible things that we have. And so God provides for us not only natural things, but God provides for us even some, uh, some things that are beyond natural. God provides for us peace. Come on, somebody said, thank you for peace. And peace is so broad, it's beyond what we can comprehend. God gives us comfort of the soul. I, I, my, my sister and I can bear witness. Our, our other, one of my baby sisters that stood here and uh, stood with me some years ago passed on to be with the Lord earlier this year. And it took the comfort of the Holy Spirit and the peace of God to cause us to go through that time. But it was God's peace that came in and comforted our souls. And it's the same peace that's here. And the more I come to the Lord, the more I have contentment, the more I have comfort. In every state that I am in, in every situation that I am, I look to the table that God has provided. If you are married, look to the table that God has provided.
Even when it appears that your spouse may not provide everything. Look to the table of God for that fellowship. God can redirect your thoughts so that they may be well. Even those of us who are unmarried, you can look to God for that fellowship, that contentment. He provides for you. Anybody in the room know that God provides for you. Even what beyond what words can say, God provides. God gives comfort. God gives consolation. And we are grateful. And so we have a table. Somebody said, thank you for the table, God. N number, number five, the number five that we deal with uh, is that we thank God for a new home. Somebody said, thank God for a new home. Well, a new home, yes. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 1. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed. It's from the New King James Version. For if this earthly tent we live in is destroyed. We have a building from God, an eternal house in the heaven, not built by human hands. So we have another place. Do you not know that there is a destination that is secure for us? Each and every one of us have a destination that's secure. The Bible lets me know in John 14 and 2. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. So God has a, a, a secure destination for us. We have a place beyond this time. Somebody say, I thank you for the new house, God. Not only do we have a destination beyond this time, we have a departure scheduled. Each and every one of us have a departure that has been scheduled for us, that is beyond this world. The Bible says in John 4, I mean in Job 14 and 14, if a man die, shall he live again. All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come from the King James Version of Scripture. So all the days of my appointed time, I will wait until my change come. An appointed time means a time has been pre-decided. Pre-decided means in advance. And so therefore, there is a pre-decided time for you to exit. But prophesy to somebody and say, you will not depart before your time. When it's time for you to depart, then you will go there. So we thank God for a, a departure time that has been set for our lives. The enemy does not want you to see that, but you need to see that you have a time to live. And as a matter of fact, there are certain moments when certain things we do, I, I believe it, it expands our life and expands our existence. Do you remember the man called Hezekiah? How many years were added to his life when the prophet Isaiah says you shall die? How many years were added? 15 years. Remember Isaiah went in and prophesied, said set your house in order because you shall surely live. You shall not die, but you shall, I mean, shall not live, but shall die. And, and, and the man of God, he turned his face toward the wall. And, he, and when he turned his face toward the wall, Hezekiah, God told Isaiah, go back and tell him, I'm adding to your life. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Now, what was it? Was it pre-appointed for him to die in, in a certain year? Or was it pre-appointed for him to die burst, burst, based on the fulfillment of assignment? I believe this. The pre-appointed time for us to die is based on us fulfilling the assignment that God has for our life. That's why the Apostle Paul says, I have kept the faith. I have what? I finished my course. He lets me know that certain things have already been done. I kept the faith. I, I finished before. I fought a good fight. I've done those things that are necessary. And so therefore, it's time for me to depart. You should not die until you fulfill your assignment. So say it when we say, I shall not die until I complete my work. Now, if you're busy completing your work, then the enemy does not come in and take you out. So when you're busy doing what God called you to do, that is the best place you can ever be. They used to say it this way, that the safest place in the whole wide world is where? 
in the will of God. So when I am doing what God wills for me to do, I am in the best place. When the enemy comes for me, he cannot take me out because I'm in the perfect will of God. Anybody trying to be in the perfect will of God? Somebody wave your hand and say, yes, I am. When, when you're in the perfect will of God, you're doing what God ordained you to do and, and fulfilling your assignment. Then, therefore, you're not dying until it's done. But when it is done, it's like this. It's like a preacher that is, gets through preaching. He can drop the mic, meaning you have nothing else to say because it's already done. When it is time for you to die, you're going to say, I'm finished. I've done. I've done all I can do. I'm going to go to sleep and be with the Lord. That's how you're going to live. Someone say amen. Amen. Someone say amen. You'll not die because you're sorrowful and painful, but you'll do like Jesus on the cross. You'll say it's finished. I've done what I'm supposed to do. Whether it's at 33 years, 66 years, 109 years, make sure those years are filled with faithfulness to God. There is a scheduled time for us. Our departure has been set. Like our destination has been set, so is the departure. And also, there is a reward waiting for us. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number, uh, 2 Timothy 4, verse number 8, from the King James Version of Scripture, henceforth, there is laid up for us I have for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all of them who are loving his appearing. So I have a reward that is waiting on me. I have a reward waiting on me. I have a time of departure that is scheduled. I have a, a destination that is secured. I thank God for a new home. I thank God for these five reasons. Number one is what? Say it aloud. It's what? I thank God for what? Say it loudly with me. I thank God for what? Thank God for who we are. Number two, I thank God for, for how we are. Number three, I thank God for. And number four, I thank God for. And then number five, I thank God for, I thank God for the new home that he's provided for me. I thank God for that. Just for a moment here. If we have all of these reasons to thank God, what do you think then the enemy does? What is his natural thing to do? How does he steal, kill, and destroy when it comes to thanksgiving. He wants you to put your mind on things that really doesn't matter. Things that don't matter. The temporary things. Those things that are seen, they're temporary. He wants you to put your mind on the temporary things. But there are certain things that are eternal. They're revealed through the word of God that we've just spoke of. When you focus on the things through the word of God, the things that you see daily really don't matter. So when you start thanking God, it elevates your mind from the things you do see to the things that are eternal, and that is the word of God. That is the reason why there are Thanksgiving seasons that are repeated over and over to teach us to shift our mind. Somebody say shift. Said again, shift. We shift our mind and we focus on the things that God has done. You get news that there's some trouble in your home. What do you do? I thank God that God will fix that trouble. You get news that there's a situation in your body. You say, I thank God that He is my healer. You get news. That someone you love is experiencing great trouble. You say, I thank God that God will fix that too. You get news that in your class that you, or you're studying, you didn't get the grade you want. You say, I thank God that God will turn that around too. Are there any thankful people in this house? Yes. Lift your hands up to the Lord and Lord, we bless you. 
We thank you, we honor you, and we magnify your name. You have been good to us, and we appreciate your goodness. In Jesus' name we pray. I have a few moments here. I met a gentleman over in Maryland where I was with uh, the prophet. He was a person that uh, I went to the Maryland area because uh, uh, Prophet Baden was doing a meeting there. So I flew from Houston, Texas to where he was. There was a gentleman that was there. He says, Bishop Baden, I am here now. He said, I was in the service right there in Accra and you prophesied to me that I would travel the world. And he said, here I am. I'm over here in the U.S. He said, the prophecies have come to pass.